now. There. Interesting seeing numbers on camera. <laughs> Ready? You just demo for that? Oh, okay. We don't have to. <laughs> we got that over there. Well, let me go ahead and start. This is Pegasus Technology. First rule before we start, internet is forever. <laughs> Second thing is, if, you know, everything we're going to talk about, if you feel that you have privacy to protect, great in the sense of online, there is no such thing as privacy. The mentions you touch online, there is no privacy. The whole premise of what I'm going to start talking about. Uh, my name is Ed Hubbard, and I am also known as Ed the Pagan, and I am the, one of the most socially connected pagans out there. I do social media out there. I also do P2P Microversity, and I'm also consulted with Love Your Message. And the premise of that is, love your message, not your platform. Um, I study pagan media as a whole. I've been involved with pagan media in one form or another for 20 years. I have also been involved with uh, internet service as soon as I can remember. Uh, let's face it, uh, technology has been a great thing. Having said all that, we're going to get started with what it is. And let me go ahead and ask you each, what is it that you, before we get started, what brought you out here to this uh, online resource? Because it's such a vast subject. There's a lot of things that people need. Marketing, um, being more visible for students and for my group, and also uh, um, inner, let's see, uh, uh, pagan networking, also for the project of uh, upkeep of our Earth Wisdom Labyrinth Shrine, which needs many hands, maybe not so much money. Uh, let's see, and, and online seems to be the quickest way to get information out and to find people locally. Okay. Um, I'm like you, I've been on the internet since the beginning of time. Um, I'm a network engineer by trade. I'm a program I do, I'm a computer geek. Um, just recently started doing um, websites for our community. So, uh, overall community website as well as for individual um, groups who are looking for a web presence um, who don't have the technical knowledge to do it, so I give I give them the platform with a you know a WordPress site on it, and they can go in and learn how to use that and build their own site, their own content. Um, I also just recently put together a Facebook group um, for the local area for our local pagan group and. Also, an email, Google group for those who just want email. Okay. Um, they all basically update each other. <laughs> they update yep. one, they, they pop out to the other. Um, my, my, what I'm looking to find out is not technical. I know the technical. I can make that happen. What is my struggle is getting the pagans to use it because there's a lot. That's of, a huge struggle. Because they. Yes. They don't. They need the information. They want the information, but some of them are just anti-technology. You know, I'm not you know comfortable with the internet, so I'm not going to go there. Others are well, it's privacy. How do I know that what I'm looking at isn't going to get broadcast to the world? That you know, I'm on this website. You know, especially in the Facebook world, where everything, unless you know how to lock yourself down, automatically shows up in places, and people are uncomfortable okay, with that and how to wrestle with that. I can help with that. That's a that's a big issue that I'm dealing with. I'm here just because I really don't know much of the actual technical aspects of it. I know it's out there. I know there's a huge potential there. Um, I'm from the Twin Cities area and we rock with the CNC. We yeah. do. But I just feel like there's also some kind of like podcasting aspect missing and just getting it out there and getting people comfortable with it. And I Okay, so I hear some of the same things. Um, one of the things I'm hearing from all of you is, is just wanting to, to get a better connection with the community, mm -hmm. uh, especially utilizing on sources, and also to help you with your, your more local community. Uh, information is everything. Uh, first and foremost, the internet is content is for kids. You know, content is king, and and communication is queen. Um, relationship is what you're talking about. When you're talking about the modern internet, you're talking about purely about relationships. You're not talking about sales pitches anymore. You're not talking about other aspects of it. You're talking about a series of relationships. But those are very, but they're very distinct relationships. I always love the story by Starhawk. Gave it to, uh, one of my friends gave it to me. 
And basically, a circus comes to town. And that circus paints a sign saying, circus is in town. That's advertising. They decide to take some of the elephants and walk through the center of town to tell everybody the circus is in town. That's marketing. All right. The, then they take the elephants through town, and it goes to the rose, the rose garden of the mayor. Down. That's publicity. <laughs> um, if you get the mayor to laugh about it, that's public relations. If you're the person who planned this, put it all together, that's planning. If you are the mayor's wife, say, hey, tea party's been canceled because elephants just walked through my rose garden, and you tweet that out and, and send it out through Facebook and take a photograph and put it on YouTube, that's social media. And if you get the people in the town to come to your circus and buy a ticket, that sale. Each one of these on the internet are a distinct aspect. Everybody's blending them together to get there. And a lot of times what happens is that you try to do all sorts of problems across messages. Because uh, the internet is, you know, is this sort of thing. So the first thing you have to do is that how do you advertise? In the pagan community, advertising is a really terrible word. And, and, and in advertising, I'm just saying letting people know. We're just talking making a connection. We're not talking about trying to start to sell anything. And you've mentioned Facebook. You've heard Twitter. You've heard, you know, that. You know, you've heard all these other ones. But the one that you start with, if you want to start with anything, you start with which is the It's starting to be a little, it's, it's starting to become a little antique. Um, it's starting to become a little bit more antique, meaning that, it, you know, it's great for essays and it's great for contact information. But it's still a place that a lot of people go to because it's very high into the search engine. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about SEO in a little bit. Um, if you're trying to get your message out, here's what it is. It used to be Wild Hunt. Wait, it's now Patios and Wild Hunt on Patios, um, which is a, a which is a site uh, Sark Foster's uh, manager of. That's kind of got a good a good audience. Uh, the largest audience is Witch School. Uh, it's the most uh, it's the single most traffic pagan site in the world. Give them one of the Um you also the other the other places are that you want to get mentioned is uh, you know if you get mention your stuff on Witch Fox, get it mentioned in Wild Hunt through a press release, yes, common link. These are some of the, the more centralized places. But even if you took all of the pagan sites in the world today, every one of them made them into one big super site, would still only be about eight thousand in the world. Our traffic is very, very minimal. It's a rounding and it's highly, highly fractional. So you have to go in there with a mission. So to build an online resource, you have to know what you want to do. If you say you want to have friends on Facebook, then get friends on Facebook. Don't go to Facebook to be my friend on Facebook and then turn around and ask him, join my Twitter feed. That's like saying, hey, come to my workshop. And then Alan's saying, well, I have a word, another workshop right over there that's on, on, on Twittering. Why don't you come on over there? But you came in here to talk to me on my Facebook page, and already I'm asking you to go to a different party. People do this all the time. So you really want to decide, if you're just starting out, develop one of the, of the chains and use it as your focus. Um, Facebook or Twitter, it doesn't matter. Either one of those are good. Um, Meetup.com. Meetup.com is if you want to do a lot of personal things, but I don't think Meetup is a good starter point. I think a Meetup, let me explain what Meetup is. It's a site that you pay a small fee to have a listing there for you to people to meet up to meet into a group. I think Meetup is great when you want to have that group. It does a lot of the same things Facebook does, letting, right. uh, allowing you to post uh, photos, uh, mm -hmm. allowing you to have discussions, and, and post other things. The difference is, is, is in, in, and I agree with all that, but people don't see Meetup as a whole, except if you're already involved with it, as a place to go to get information. Right. Uh, I find people tend to shy away from it because one, they have to sign up for it, yeah. especially if they're going for topics like paganism. Okay. Let me talk about a phenomena that I'm dealing with. This is a phenomena I've dealt with with people like Chris Brogan, uh, uh, Scott Totten. Um, I've been talking to people about it. It's called, Peggy Community has a problem called the Dark Visitor. And the dark visitor is a person, for various reasons, cannot be registered. They will never register for your site. They're going to do. They're not going to touch an advertising piece on your site. They're going to try to avoid tracking because they see this as taboo. We are still the pornography of the intellectual class. Uh, people who are, you know, smart and you know, witty and 
people who would be pagans, but we're still kind of pornography. We're still kind of taboo. Even though we see this stuff as PG, you know, at worst R rated, we are not we aren't we aren't in that rating. This is forbidden. And a lot of dark visitors are worried about discrimination. They're worried about being recorded. Now mind you, this is the same phenomenon that happens to Starbucks. There are people who won't sign up and like the Starbucks page because they don't want their friends to know that they like Starbucks. So that when people criticize about Starbucks, right, yeah. they can go ahead and criticize them even though they're going there and spending their $4. Walmart has the same thing. There's a lot of people who hate Walmart, won't do anything friendly to them in public, but man, they love it enough to go there and shop. The pagan community is filled with this super heavy dark visitors, and most of our traffic is barely recordable. Okay? And so it's very, very important if you want to reach uh, to the pagan market you have a lot of open pages. Um, I have a lot of open pages with back-end recorders, which just says there's a person visiting. It doesn't grab my fees, it doesn't grab anything. So it doesn't set off any warnings, because it doesn't, there's nothing to be recorded. How you doing? Welcome. Um, and so that's the big thing you have to understand. So since, well, let's go ahead and get that one out of the way. So the pagan community has this heavier, dark visitor class. And then you have a second class of people that are very much in the pagan world that says, I just saw Harry Potter. I'm a super fan of Charmed. I'm a super fan of Buffy. And you need these people. Because they all really are interested. Especially if you have a retail site. These are the people who buy the bright, shiny things. And they want these things, and they, and they do want to learn some of them. Um, a, a good percentage of them, I would say 15 to 20 percent of them, have a serious interest, while the other say flaw. So you have to get them out of your system, through your system, and out of your system as quickly as possible. And the way that you get them into your system is to let them have some very nice upfront pages. It doesn't matter if it's a Facebook page or, or that. So this is the second visitor. The third type of visitor is, I already know it all. I want to see what you've got so I can criticize it. Because I've already criticized everybody else, and I've already left my messages on their page, and I want to do this because it builds my name. Um, you see that on forums, you see it on that, and they make criticism, and don't feed the trolls. You leave them up or exercise them, I leave them up, but basically, you just keep on what you're saying. Let's start with one thing. Any sort of web presence you do, I don't care what type of presence you do, you must have a hub that you own. You must bring these people back if you're going to do this smartly. You have to have a website or an email list you own or something solid in the center. And I recommend a website. If you don't have it, if you're not really good at it, I love Ning. Ning is $19.99 a month. It gives you all the aspects of letting people sign up. You own all that name. What is the name again? N-I-N-G. N-I-N-G. That's what I thought you said. Ning. It means peace. And what it is, it lets you build your own Facebook page, you build a site, or your own Twitter site, or your own, it lets you build a website. You build your own hub. But even if you just have a page that you receive people at, even though these are dark visitors, you need a place where they can sign up for an email. But you must own a core hub site that you're dragging everybody back to, or you're loving everybody's platform more than your message. I watch people, let me tell you about people who've had spent a lot of time. MySpace was like the cat's meow, it was going to last forever. Let us get our friends, let us spend a million and a half dollars in advertising. We needed our two billion friends on MySpace. And MySpace gave us such great stars as Tina Tequila and uh, a number of other reality shows. Yes, absolutely for MySpace. Where's MySpace today? Okay. And where's everybody at today? Facebook. Facebook. And Twitter. Um, do you remember LiveJournal? Yep. Yeah. First blogging site, really authentic. People are still on it. Why do you think MySpace died? It got taken over by the King Poppers. Actually, it was something even more simple. It was, it was very, very simple. They cut communication between people. They tried to interrupt the path of communication to people with advertising. And the younger audience can bypass advertising better than the older generation can. The older you are, the more intolerant of advertising that you are that, you're, that you are on the internet. The younger you are, the easier it's just it's a black ops. 
That's why I went to Facebook. Because mm -hmm. they had their little ads on the side, and that's all you saw. And people couldn't right. bling out their, their pages and stuff, because some of those formats were just scary to look at, and it was just... It was the... Yeah, and you couldn't... You, the big thing that MySpace failed to do, so after it was taken over News Corp, and the big thing is News Corp took it over, is that they... They really were a hacker site. Everybody could have their own image, their own look. And it grew up, but it got so complicated that you didn't know where to look. You went to, every friend's page could be different. And so you didn't give it to. Whereas you look at Facebook, everything is kind of uniform. You know, so that's kind of thing. And people complain about that too. Um, open thing, you can see find, uh, I, I got them all. And there's some more on there. But it's really kind of important that you make your linkages there, is that you have a central hub. Without a central hub of some sort that you control, if MySpace happens to you, because I have 6,000 friends on MySpace, do you think I lost them? I migrated them. I have migrated people. Let me go ahead and get back to why central hub is important. I migrated from people from GeoCity to OneList to Yahoo Group. Also had a space on LiveJournal when it opened up. Migrated from LiveJournal and Yahoo Groups to GeoCity to my own website in 2001. At the same time, I was on something called ThemeStream. Do you remember ThemeStream? No, of course not. It was an essay site that they were going to pay you to do essays. Um, and then I, got, I also had a place under Associated Content, so I'm moving there. So finally I get them on my website for what, what I call Wixful. I'm always constantly getting them to sign up. We're a membership-based site. Today we're at 250,000 people after 10 years at our core. At the same time, I'm always dealing with the next technology. I dealt with something called Orkut. Didn't make it, but tried. You wouldn't believe how many tries I've done. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, or now we're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn is a professional cycle, and if you're a professional pagan, be there. There's a lot of great business connections there. And and today I am now looking to be rated on things like clout. Who has knows their clout before? Oh, if you don't know about K L O U T, it's a new toy. It tells you how your score in social media is, how socially media active your particular person is. Uh, I got a ranking of 61. Llewellyn has a ranking of 57. I think Alan's yours was last I think was 56. Uh, no, it's gone down. I'm I'm about I'm about 49 now. And yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to get it back up again. They changed some of the things, but yeah. Right. And people are using these ratings as the new sort of measure. So this is kind of it. But you start with a central hub. You must have a central hub. And if you're using an email, I still say email is still the killer application. People still read more email than anything else. Now you may not think it is, but email also leads to other conversations. Uh, it, there are other methods of communication, we'll talk about them, but email still is really core for a lot of people. Uh, plus you base everything else. If you're starting a presence, one of the best things to do is go to Gmail, grab yourself a Gmail name. And I'll tell you why, and, it, and I'll explain that. Because with a Gmail account, then you can go out and get all your other social media under that Gmail account. And use that one email to have one system of it. So you, when you go to cloud, you sign up when you go to Facebook to sign up, when you go to Twitter to sign up, when you go to Orkut to sign up, when you uh, sign up at LinkedIn, whatever the project is that you're working on, you have one email okay. so you can keep track of it. And I have, for each of my major projects, I have one email to control all of those components. Because you're going to lose track of the components, let me tell you. So you have to be able to migrate your, your online resources. So that's why I'm telling you don't get so caught up in the tools. We'll talk about the tools today. But remember the most important thing is your message. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about message. Message has got to be simple. For Wishful, it's, it's your anytime, any place, magical and wicked education. I described my product pretty quickly. I think you know what my product is. Mm -hmm. Which is? Uh, wicked and magical one thing. <laughs> and when can you access it? Anytime you want. Huh? And that's it. That's all. And that literally was our message, and it's done very well for us. The longer your message, right, the longer your message is, the more muddled it gets. Just do it is who? Thank you. Yeah. And you know that, but everything else. Um, turning, oh, remember how it goes. Turning our young men and women into 
disciplined soldiers. Army. The army. But do you know what their motto, what, what it got translated into? Army of one. Army of one. Or, you know, you know this sort of army. So they, they took that idea of thinking, of, be all that you can be is actually the one. Oh, okay. Be all the one you can be. But they had this really long statement that they, they turned out disciplined soldiers. And they did. They said, be, be all that you can be. Yeah, everybody. What's the name of your site? Oh, uh, which school? Which school? W I T C A. School. Dot com. Here you go. Take one. Do it fast as it fast it. There you go. Um. So you have your hub. Once you have your hub, you can go out there and do anything. So, you, so it's important to have your message, and that message is what's coming off your hub. So if you want to be the, I don't care if you want to be the world's greatest tarot card reader. That's what you got to say to them. you got to say it in a way that says, like, they don't just automatically reject it. Oh, no, I know somebody better than that. Um, for our young lady, you take more of like, <laughs> um, If you're like the young lady, uh, Danielle Young, out of Salem, she became Salem's very own. And she became the Dark Rose of Tarot, because she's a redhead. Because she's competing against a lot of big personalities. She had to set out something very simple. So she, so she goes, oh, I've been reading all my life. I'm Salem's very young. I was born and raised here because of message. And if you're in Salem, Massachusetts, want to be read by a Salem witch, that's a very powerful combine. But because she knew that wasn't going to work all the time on the national front, she started one second one called Dark Rose of Tarot. Kind of empty on it. What does it mean? And she can then fill you in. But at least you know that what she does. Tarot, and you've got at least one physical attribute of her. Red. So you can remember that. So if your message, so you have to make your message as simple as possible. It is because we live in an over-communicated society, and people can only remember very short things. So you must have, whatever it is that your message is, it must be reflected in the way your website .com is. And .com is about to deteriorate. Let me go ahead and tell you. It's going to be .edu, it's going to be .whatever. It's already beginning to be. So, so if you can't get your name as a .com, I would say today, I will tell you that's extremely important for SEO purposes, but I'm going to tell you this is probably the last year I'm going to say that. Love your platform, so have it this year, and maybe it's going to be important over time. But if you can't find what you like there, go ahead and look for it in other countries. You know, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and look for it on, on you know, you can find a name you like, and it's dot .it, or if it's dot, you know, info, that's going to be less relevant. Yeah. But .com, I still think, has a little bit of an advantage because most of the search engine defaults are still full .com up first. The Google algorithm in the next update will change that because they're going to start selling dot .whatever. I wanted to make a bid for that. I wanted to get to .pagan. Yeah, I have websites that say .pagan. $150,000 to set it up. But people are going to spend that. But that means I would have the right to sell all the web things. Um, so that hundred and fifty thousand could get you uh, over a million. A million. A billion. <laughs> yeah. Um, it did. It, okay. Um, do you ever see the dot TV? Mm -hmm. I tell. Do you know that country? Uh, to build, to, to Yeah, it's twenty million dollars a year. From that. That's actually a country. Diminutive. And it's a little tiny island, and they get twenty million dollars from all the names that are registered to that type. And GoDaddy manages it for them. And because back when the internet first really started, didn't somebody go around and buy up all the names of like the big companies? Absolutely. Like the research is a big thing for a long time. Yeah. It's better and better. So, you know, four, four letter domain, five yeah. letter domain. Uh, that's where Kmart money. is in Kmart.com. It's blue yeah. dot something. Yeah, blue it like, is. Yeah, blue like that. Too. I have a friend who owns BL.com, yeah. his initials. Yeah. He got in way early. And the earlier that you get in. But unfortunately, we're not dealing with that anymore. So you mm -hmm. get the name that you get, you get, and you just learn to live with it. A lot of people are starting to use sentences. But still, I still think the shorter, the better. More monic, the better. I mean, that's that, 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 huh? Years ago, I've got like.com with a Y. So it's L Y T H. That's better. Um, I refuse to ever sell it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. I own hundreds of names, actually. Yeah, I, I own about a thousand. Yeah. Um, because it is. And my simplest one, Pegasus Tonight. That's the name of the radio show. 
that I do every evening. There. And we use Pagans Tonight. I own which school? I own uh, PaganLibrary.com. I have WitchServices.com. Oh, these are all sites I've yet to develop. But, but okay, so we get so we got our hub. We're getting a little off track here. <laughs> you got your mission statement. Now, what is it that you want to do? And one of the things I one of the things I heard of is, what do you want to do? Now, what you want to do more than anything else is draw traffic to you. It's called pulling traffic to you. And one of the things you have to do is get to the bottom of Google, and it says. Submit. When you put that website in there, when you ask them to submit, they do something called spidering you. And it comes and finds you and they list you in the SEO. Still, the number one place people get traffic known is not Facebook, it's not Twitter, it's still Google. Um, actually, Facebook is a closed environment, so you have to understand that. So what you do on Facebook is on Facebook, <laughs> there's only one, only 20% of all traffic is on Facebook. Tremendous amount of traffic. But there's still 80% you have to pay attention to. And that's where your website's important. So once you're dealing with that, so you got your message, you got it put down there. Is it an event? Is it something you want to do? You have to decide what it is that you want. Um, and, okay, you were talking about marketing yourself as a tarot person. In order to do so, I would then go make sure that you grab your Facebook name and your Twitter name. Now, I am of the belief that your Facebook profile, unless you are a personal person who's using it as your personal life, is completely open, you know, open it up and treat it like a personality. It's your own personal, you know, it's your own personal group. These are the people who are following you and they're supposed to be doing things for you and you're supposed to be doing things for them. And I'm big into this. I kick people off my, I keep my personal profile, which is limited to 5,000, pretty full all the time. And I go through there every couple of months. And if you've never replied to me, you have a small network. Um, you're not impacting my world. You're not letting me into your news feeds because you're not liking my stuff. I remove you and I replace you. And I'm always looking to continuously replace people that are active. Because what, I'm not talking about how you communicate with your family. This is not anything of this. It's how you work your groups. Then that personal profile page is the number one piece of an algorithm. What you put on your personal profile page gets put into all those people's news feeds. And, the way it would, and it's weighed on. Photos and videos are the top of the list. Followed by heavily liked and commented things. So if you comment on somebody, it's more likely that's going to show up in their, your news feed. And if you, all three of you commented and get into your news feed, it's more likely to be in your friend's news feed. So getting people to comment and like is really essential um, on the Facebook site. So you use your Facebook site, at least for your group or whatever is your main site, as sort of a, like, how can I bring in these influential people? Like Selena Fox. Like Oberon Self. Go right to the top. Like Blue Ellen. You know, go ahead and like these very heavy, heavy pages. Because if they like you back, then you're going to get on their feed. And my feed, when I put out a feed, goes out to about 2 million impressions. Every time I'm commenting to my 5,000 friends, I'm reaching potentially as much as 2 million people. I'm more likely reaching about 80,000. But they have that really super big number, which is the edge of my network. And now with the Patrick McCollum stuff, let me go ahead and tell you what we did on Monday with Patrick McCollum. Patrick McCollum had his press conference. They called us. We Twittered it out and we Facebooked and said, watch people there. Right now, my measurements of uh, the hacking, what we call the measurements, we reached out to 200 million. And some of our comments have had a fourth generation, meaning I sent, sent it out. Say, then you Twittered it, and then you saw it on her page, and you did it, and then you did it because you saw it on her. That is the real dynamic of what they call virility. The more viral something is, it's more that does that. So your profile page represents the people who are most likely to make something you want viral. Because they like you already. And, and if they don't do, and if they're not reacting with you, and they know that you're going to kick them off, at least get you some comments and everything else. It's better to have 2,000 active people than 5,000 inactive people. 
and you know, be ruthless about it. Now, if you have a personal one for your family, I'm not saying get rid of your sisters and brothers, but Jim, your pagan profile, let's treat it like a business that it is. Be ruthless about it. And you want those people to know. And here's what you want to make sure they can do. You want them to send them where? At least once a week, you want to make a comment to go where? To your hub site. If you're not sending them back to your hub site, at least once a week, you're doing something wrong. And you get them to come back to your hub site. Remember, everything comes back to your hub site. So your Twitter, you can do all your nice Twittering and build a relationship. And you, you can't just say, come to my hub site, come to my hub site, come to my no, hub site. Listen, that's bad. But if you say, hey, I saw your interview. I thought it was a really good interview. Everybody check out their interview. And it says, also check out on my hub site where I linked all, for this interview and all the other interviews they found. So if you got a local news story, if you got a local news story, you start putting a list on your page that you send everybody to. Don't send them to the news story. Send them to your page. Take an extra for that story. Put the link to the story and put every other copy of it. Make them come through you so you record them. And you'll record both dark visitor and recorded visitor before they hit that newspaper. If you send them directly to the newspaper, you're giving the newspaper traffic and you have no way of knowing how much of that traffic is yours. That's why you need the hub. So then you go on Facebook and you Twitter out the page where you got the link, not where the news story is. Everything you do has got to bring it back to the hub. Linked in the same way. I run this professional site. This is what we do. I do tarot reading. I'm available from a professional point of view if you're doing something professional, such as a tarot reader. So I'm a tarot reader. I do parties. I do corporate events. LinkedIn is the place that you're most likely to be. You have to match your platform. You. If you're a band, you should still be on, on MySpace. Because MySpace is really very teenified. You know, it's still there. It's still very active. But if you had, you know, if you want a band, that's who you should be. If you're doing Facebook, it's just about everything.